so professor great to have you uh, speak to deccan herald uh, you know when we talk about uh, the indian institute of science we generally think it's a research organization deep uh, into scientific research we don't generally get to hear about the uh, entrepreneurial uh, aspects of that uh, it was interesting that you mentioned uh, there are some 60 startups coming out of uh, the iisc ecosystem uh, can you tell us about you know what what exactly uh, you do in terms of uh, entrepreneurship in terms of uh, incubating these companies Firstly, uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, talking to you uh, in this special conclave arranged by Deccan Herald. Uh, you're quite right, you know, uh, IASC is traditionally known to be a research university. In fact, we are number one research university in India. Mm. Um, but at the same time, you know, over the last uh, decade or so, there has been a very conscious realization that unless we take efforts in translating our research into products and societal impacts, mm -hmm. oftentimes it gets lost. That is why there is a thrust in entrepreneurship program. Mm -hmm. We have an organization called uh, Society for Innovation and Development, okay. which sort of acts as a window to external world, especially in the context of startups and industry interaction. Mm -hmm. So, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, in the last five years, we have more than 60 startups coming out of this emphasis. Excellent. Mostly in deep science and technology, mm -hmm. right? These are not usual app-based startups. Right. You know? right. That is a distinguishing feature. Mm -hmm. right. So, what we enable here in this uh, incubation center is, firstly, uh, provide them support. Support is in many aspects. We provide them space, mm -hmm. which is very important for somebody who is starting. Yes. We provide them seed funding. Mm. We provide them great mentors because mm -hmm. when a startup is trying to develop a product, mm -hmm. there are a lot of technological hurdles. Okay. So they get access to the mentorship of the entire IAC research faculty and ecosystem. Excellent. Right? That's another important thing. Mm. We also provide them access to sophisticated infrastructure and facilities, mm -hmm. some very expensive equipment, which it's impossible for startups to procure. Mm -hmm. So we give them these equipments for them to come and use. Okay. Right? So that's also another great support. Okay. And subsequently, we also help them in connecting them to VC community mm -hmm. and other stakeholders such as marketing experts, business experts, and so on and so forth. It's a you know, holistic program. that. Right. Excellent, excellent. So we have only heard of the Stanford's and the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, uh, you know, those kinds of institutions doing this, uh, taking uh, things from lab to commercial uh, technology and uh, productization. Uh, what, 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 what's the inspiration? What was the source of thinking for uh, IASC to be doing this? And is the aspiration to be more, uh, you know, sort of, what comes out of Stanford or what comes out of Boston? Uh, yeah. I, I must tell you that in a different way, IASC has been at it for mm -hmm. quite some time. Okay. IASC is known as institute builder, institutional builder, right? Right. right? See, I mean, our Indian economy opened up only in 80s, Correct. as you know. Mm -hmm. But even before that, mm -hmm. IASC started many public sector institutes. Not many yes. people know that. Yeah. Central Power Research Institute came mm. out of IIS, mm. right? TIFR came out of IIS. Yes. So we have been doing this institution building, but okay. in 80s and 90s, this shift happened, mm. opening up of economy and all that. Even in that period, Wipro Technology, they actually started out of computer science department in IISC. Not Excellent. many people know that, yes. right? Not many. Uh, but we were not uh, very big in, you know, startup incubation and all that, which started only, I would say, early 2000s. Okay. You know, one of the early companies, end of 90s, early 2000s was Strand Genomics. You may have heard about yes. this, Strand which was recently yes. acquired by Reliance, right? right? Mm. And it was happening in, you know, spurts. It, it was not really, you know, one-off thing, right? Mm. Mm. Um, I think uh, in 2010, 2015 period, is when uh, you know director back then decided that look come in 
you know for us it is very very important to enable this startup ecosystem mm. uh, because we were seeing that lot of our intellectual property that was developed was really languishing okay right and that was a trigger to really mm. build this startup ecosystem so is there a uh, patented uh, technology coming out of uh, Correct. IAC at, Correct. The, at this stage? Correct. In fact, now IAC every year files uh, more than 100 patents, you know, okay. international patents. Right? So there's so much IPs that are coming out. Excellent. Unless you have the startup uh, ecosystem, you know, you will not be able to capitalize Correct. on that. So that was Correct. the trigger. Correct. Can you give us some examples of the kinds of companies that are coming out of uh, the IAC ecosystem? The IAC the ecosystem really deep tech, uh, deep is science, supporting uh, deep tech, but no. across different domains, mm. uh, you know, healthcare, Mm -hmm. is uh, very big. I'll give you two examples in healthcare. One of them happens to be my own startup, right. Path Shod Healthcare. Mm -hmm. In 2015, we started uh, this venture. Mm. Again, the idea was to translate the outcome of research mm -hmm. that had happened in my group in the previous 10 years. Okay. Because we had generated close to more than 10 international patents. Okay. So we said only way to really commercialize that and make a societal impact is through startup. Mm. So this company has now come up with one of its kind handheld device, mm. which can do five blood tests and three urine tests on a single platform. Excellent. Right. Okay. So that okay. is a very, very unique platform, which is currently being used in 12 states in the country. Okay. Right. It's Excellent. actually being used and it's Excellent. impacting the lives of people, right? Mm. That is great satisfaction for Excellent. a scientist yes. to see that the, yes. the science has gone all the way to mm. impact uh, society. Mm. Mm. Another very important uh, startup that is, uh, is working on vaccines, okay. right? Uh, in fact, it has developed a warm COVID vaccine. Okay. Right. This is again uh, done by a faculty in uh, biological sciences, Raghavan Varadarajan. Okay. He has developed Typically, as you know, COVID vaccines have to be cold uh, storage. Cold store. yeah. But this can be stored at room temperature. Room temperature. Right? Excellent. Now, you know, the, the challenge, of course, in any biological uh, research and product mm. is clinical validation. Yeah. Right? That is happening right now. That's another example. Excellent. There are companies in uh, space sector. Mm. Right? Bellatrix is one you company. You mentioned Bellatrix, yeah. Which mm. is uh, working in, um, you know, a variety of space components such mm. as thrusters, for example. Uh, the other company is Astron. Right. Uh, they want to provide internet anytime, anywhere, in any remote area through satellites. Mm. So right. they, somebody like this will be competing with the Bharti, SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX. SpaceX. <coughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a young team, you know, you really get excited mm. seeing their uh, mm. energy level. Right. I mean, they say that, look, we are going to compete with SpaceX, uh, you know, and they actually have already built a product now. Uh, it's an intermediary product before going to, to space uh, internet. This is really to enable pr for the cell phone towers okay. to enable efficient communication. Right. They are building another product for that. Right? Okay. So this is actually being deployed in many locations right now. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So there's another company I can uh, give you an example, which is very relevant in the context of the chip shortage. Oh, yes. Right. Mm. There's a company called Agnet. Okay. It's in gallium nitride electronics. Wow. Okay. Gallium nitride is a the next gen second material. most important semiconductor after silicon. Mm. Right. Some of my colleagues, Srinivasan Raghavan and a few others, they started this for two applications. One is electrical vehicles mm. and the other one is, uh, you know, communication. Okay. High frequency communication, excellent. 6G and things like that. Super, excellent, excellent. We don't often hear of, uh, you know, professors uh, taking up entrepreneurship. I mean, you are you are an right. uh, right. example, but you must be more of an exception rather than a, uh, you know, role, right, at uh, IASC and uh, Indian, most Indian institutes. So do uh, the terms of your, uh, you know, tenure at IASC, uh, uh, are they helpful to you, you to do this? Has the uh, government changed the rules to allow uh, people to be between academics and business? That's an excellent question. In fact, when I started my company, probably I was the second faculty entrepreneur. Mm. Today, there are at least 20 faculty entrepreneurs. Wow. Okay. Since 2015, a mm. lot of interventions have happened. Number one, faculty who are on role can take sabbatical leave 
for a year to get the company started. Mm -hmm. Even when they are on the regular employment, they can take one day in a week off to work for the company, mm -hmm. right? And you know, all these have really propelled many faculty to take up startups. Excellent, excellent. So that's an excellent note to end on. Um, good to know that you know, there is a whole lot of uh, great stuff happening at IIC and coming out of that you know, adds, adds to the Bangalore sheen. So great. Thank that, you very great. much. Thank uh, you. Pleasure Thank to you. be here.